Hey, how's it going? Hope you're having a shit one. I just got to Istanbul, Turkey, but I just wanted to say that I'm here for the F1 and we're also going to be exploring the city. And I didn't really know how to say that just into one like nice, simple, concise message. So I've been actually standing here for like 15 minutes trying to figure out what exactly I'm going to say to you. Probably going to make a POV video as well, which is something I wanted to mention. But today is going to be all about the F1 and then going out to take some photos at night. I'm sort of just figuring out how exactly I'm going to say all that to you. I guess, I'm, I guess we'll just go with that. I think that was a pretty good explanation of everything. So, enjoy. Dude, holy shit. I was guessing we were going to get picked up in a Mercedes van, but... <laughs> Fuck me, it's a Maybach Mercedes van. Dude, I feel like you just entered the club. <laughs> nah, sorry mate, not with those shorts. <laughs> not tonight, mate. Yeah. <laughs> just get kicked out of the van. Do you think these other people are like, fuck's sake? <laughs> you got stuck with these guys. <laughs> o'clock in the morning and we're gonna head over to the F1 right now we're gonna jump on a bus and then we get taken straight to the track now pretty early during the day and I think that's just to avoid the traffic this is the area that sort of has been designated for us um, for our group and team I guess I'm part of like a other group of other photographers and YouTubers and stuff like that. So we get to stay here. And then there's also a rooftop area as well, which we can go check out, which would be sick. Well, I think we might be able to take some pretty decent shots from here, but it would also be really cool to get down to a ground level. So I literally saw this photo recently from a photographer that I follow. I would really love to take a similar photo of an F1 car with all the rain behind it. I know that would just be insane. But regardless, we still have a really nice view from up here, which might still allow us to get some nice panning shots. Cause I think that's probably gonna look the best when you try and do a panning shot. But we can also pretty much get in line with the pits here as well. And uh, the excitement's starting to settle in, honestly. Like, this is fucking insane. I'm just at the, <laughs> I'm just at the Turkish Grand Prix. <laughs> what the fuck, this is sick. I'm on this terrace and you just get a whole 360 view of the track. Yeah, I'm, I'm smiling. I'm smiling so much now. We're gonna be able to get some sick photos. And also, come over here from the others. There's other people here and I don't want to embarrass myself, but um, I'm not that proud to share this, but I've never actually been to the F1. This is my first F1 experience. Even though the F1 starts in Melbourne, the track is 15 minutes away from my house and I've never been to the F1. Yeah. Don't roll your eyes at me. Fight me in the comment section. I'll fuck you up, mate. Oh, holy fuck. It's so loud. Oh my God. This is fucking awesome. The amount of mist on them is insane. I want to get one of Verstappen from this angle because the white car looks so sick. Maybe that one. Oh my god, what a shot! Holy 
<laughs> That's insane. Right, I'm gonna try a few more. God damn, that's fucking impossible. I don't know how these F1 photographers do it. Oh, I might have got one there. I was just flicking my camera around. So I need to shoot it like right over the ridge here so I'm not getting the fence in the pan. Because although 200 mil is good, I really wish I had a 100 to 400. I just missed them. My ears! I should have brought earplugs! Champagne shot. <laughs> <laughs> Successfully photographed Turkish GP. That was amazing. There were definitely photos I wish I could have gotten, but obviously I had limited access to some places, so we couldn't get all the photos I really wanted to, but that's okay because that is just an excuse to come back to another F1 and try and get some more shots. But now it's going to get dark, and it's my last night here in Istanbul. So I do really want to go out and take some photos before I go because I don't know the next time I'm going to be able to come back here. So, let's get started on that. We've just come waterside here to get a few photos. Ordered a tea actually as well because usually when you come to any sort of restaurant that's by the water, they'll most likely ask you to buy something or give them some sort of money. Otherwise, I'll just kick you out. So we just bought some tea. Turkish tea. Let me have a sip now. Mm. Amazing. Anyway, <laughs> actually just burnt my tongue, so I hope that was worth it. So anyway, there's a shot right here. Oh, there's two temples. Temples, fuck, sorry, that's probably so offensive. Two mosques. <laughs> Shit. It's not a temple. There's a shot of the, what looks to be the Golden Gate <laughs> Bridge equivalent of Istanbul. Does that not look exactly like the Golden Gate Bridge? Yeah. That's what, like, uh, I don't even really know the name of it. It's like Boboshka Bridge or some shit like that. <laughs> I'm probably being so offensive right now, but I'm sorry. It's the fucking Golden Gate Bridge. It looks identical. So that would be a sick shot. And then also, yeah, like before the mosques. We're looking at maybe a 15 to 20 second shutter. A little bit of a higher aperture and dropping the ISO right down so you're minimizing the noise in your shot. just checked into our hotel room and I saw that there was a rooftop level. This is pretty much the view from my room. There's like a whole bunch of houses here and then like city and like little pockets of like markets and lights and stuff. So that's like 70 to 200 heaven. And then there's this massive spire in the background there. All right, let's go up to the rooftop. Hi, how's it going? I was wondering if I could take some photos of the view. No, there is a special event here. Ma but maybe? we can't take with the equipment actually. You can't uh, use the yeah. equipment? Yeah. So, as in like tripods? Yeah. Oh, we, but I can, can still use my camera? We cannot accept. Okay, well that's got to be the most misleading rooftop. I've ever seen in my life. That just went straight into a restaurant. I'm not happy with those results. That was not very nice. He kicked me out. So, I need to one up him. I need to find a new rooftop. Let's round up the boys. Okay, I'm not gonna speak like that. So yeah, I got a real serious problem with um, screaming really loudly in hotel corridors. So I gotta really 
work on that. But before we do any photography, we're gonna go get some food. Apparently I've found this little Egyptian restaurant, even though we're in Turkey. Well, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just, I just realized, yeah, how much that doesn't make sense. So anyway, whatever, it doesn't matter. What's it called? It's called Kim Kum. <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay, you Kim pronounce Kum. that. Kem Kum. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go get some cum. It's vegan at least. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Good protein. Wait, is it? No. That's not vegan. Cum's not vegan. <laughs> Why not? Leave in the comments what? below, is cum <laughs> vegan? <laughs> this is taking a turn. <laughs> is it actually vegan? It's not, cum. it's not vegan, is it? It's yeah. No, it's technically it's babies. <laughs> no, it's not. It How is it babies? You need the egg for it to be a baby, so it's just... It's just what? It's a living organism, it's mate. It's not, it's not. It's just swimmers. I know you fucking <laughs> nutted out one before we came out here. You just killed millions of lives. How's How do it? you feel? Great. <laughs> <laughs> is it vegan or not? I don't think it is. Don't think it's vegan? No. Well, oh, no, it is. Oh, um, I don't know. It's a hard one, isn't it? Hey! Well, this is pretty cool. As soon as we got to the location, which will hopefully be this building right here, that spire is completely covered in fog, which will make for a fucking sick photo. If we can get up there as well, the shot we can take with a 7200, basically a photo of all this traffic Everything happening can be in the in the foreground of the frame with the spy in the background. I mean, it's cool with the fog, but hopefully the fog can sort of go away for a little bit. Or maybe just the top of the spy can be in a bit of fog because otherwise we're not going to be able to see it at all. I guess the next mission is finding out how to get up. Hey bro, did you say A2? No way you can just press the button and go up. Yeah bro. Concierge. It's all straight past concierge. If there's concierge, they don't have things. And you just walk <laughs> Funny how the door was actually just wide open as well. <laughs> did you get it? You got it? Yes. 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 <laughs> oh my god. God, what the fuck? Are we in Shanghai or Istanbul? Dude, what a fucking city from this angle. Oh, bro, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Oh, my God, lad. This is a long exposure. I actually think we've hit the jackpot here, for sure. Oh, the jackpot God. of rooftops. It's nice just to take it in for a bit. Mm. <laughs> oh, wait, this is the F1, just between you and me. <laughs> nah, it's hard. It's hard. They're both equally as good. The weapon of choice I have for tonight is the 7200 f2.8. I'm just gonna chuck her on here, mate. So to set up this shot, I'm gonna put my camera on a two second timer, and it's gonna take five pictures at 30 seconds, f8, ISO 100. Oh yes, some of the fog is clearing. So I can see a bit more of the tower. Yes, 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 quick, 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 quick. That looks amazing. But it is really windy, and I think that's fucking up my shot as well. I'm gonna make the executive decision to switch to the 16 to 35, which is currently the lens I'm filming on right now. So let's swap over and I'll take a few photos and then we'll meet back up in a bit. The 7200 was a little bit too zoomed in and I wasn't able to get all the circles and a lot more of the 
I guess the landscapes of the roads and buildings and stuff and I just think the wide angle makes for such a better shot. So basically they were shot at 35mm so I, I didn't have to go extremely wide but compared to the 7200 it was a lot wider than what I originally thought would have been a cool shot. Oh come on, all the trees here. Istanbul is crazy, it's an insanely huge city. Um, which is awesome and there's so much to photograph really modern places and then all of a sudden you're somewhere really historic and then you take another left and you're in a market and there's just interesting characters and a whole bunch of just cool history everywhere that you just would definitely want to be photographing if you're into street photography and all that sort of stuff so definitely consider putting Istanbul on your travel list I want to go home and have a look at some of these photos so let's go give them an edit This photo, I love this photo. There's so much going on here. There's so much like grit to it, which I love. You can just see all 62 megapixels coming into play here, doing their job on that Sony A7R Mark IV. Like it is just insane how much detail you can suck out of this camera. <laughs> and plus I love shooting the McLaren car. Obviously this isn't Daniel Rick, he's number, is he number? No, this isn't Daniel Rick, that's definitely not his helmet. I love McLaren, I love their livery they've done for this year on their car, and obviously Daniel Ricciardo's on the team, and got a support home base. So I was really rooting for McLaren, but that didn't really work out <laughs> for this race, but that's okay. Just like, ah, oh, there's so much to it, like just, and how much water you can see this, these tires are turning out is ridiculous. So I just think that's a really awesome shot that just goes to show the pure, aerodynamics and capability of an F1 car. This is another pit lane shot, which I really love as well. I think the red car really pops. Shooting the colored cars was something that I was really looking out for. And this one really quickly, I just wanna show that um, I wasn't too sure how to edit this photo. So I just came over to my preset here, Fog, and pretty much just works perfectly on the car. And I'm straightening the car up and I, for the final image, I sort of left the car on the right third there. I think that sort of, worked out really well. So you can find that preset in my V2 pack. I know I shot heaps of pit lane stuff, but I love this photo as well. It was all the cars lining up. This is when qualifying was happening. So all the cars were lining up, ready to go out. And again, I'm not sure if this has been cropped in. It has a fair amount. So yeah, just again, goes to show how good it was working with the Sony uh, and how lucky I was to be able to have that camera. Because since I was, and this feels really wrong of me to say, I only had the 7200 and really even here you can see I'm at 200 mil I'm stretched for this lens and it's just really there's still so much negative space and I had to crop in a little bit um, here's a photo as well here you can just see the amount I had to crop in just to get that sort of front-on shot which I really wanted to get but wasn't able to get sort of access to get anywhere I was shooting a whole bunch of different panning photos uh, during qualifying as well and then on the actual race day, I was hoping for even more rain. So when I did try to do a side on pan shot, you could see the amount of mist coming off the car. And I think this photo has perfectly captured that. This is exactly the photo I wanted to try and get. I don't know, I'm just, I'm really happy with this photo. I think one day maybe in my garage, I could print this photo off really big and stick it up somewhere. It was really hard, as you could imagine. I think they're coming into this turn. This is sort of like towards the end part of the track and they're flying through a straight here, so they've got to be going at least 250 k's an hour, uh, and then I'm panning at 1 40th of a second at 200 mil. So I just, I just got really lucky to get the whole car here perfectly in focus. If you do motorsports photography as a job, like if that's legitimately what you do, I take my hat off to you because it's fucking hard. It's hard work. 200 mil was definitely not enough. I definitely need like a 400 or a 600 or something like that to be able to do this sort of work again. So next time I know, and I'll, I'll come more prepared, that's for sure. Moving on to the night photos. So there's a few photos here I wanna talk about, and a few things I've left, I haven't quite completed on the edit that I wanted to show you what you can do with some of your night photos. So this photo here, you can see the before and after. I added my preset, this is fucking illegal. But to get the whole cyberpunk, purple, aqua sort of look that I'm really happy with, obviously I had to drop the exposure, I changed my temperature a little bit. And instead of playing around with all my color grading here or split toning or whatever you want to call it, I don't know, this sort of confuses me a little bit and sometimes I can't really get it right. So instead, 
I just like to cheat and do something a little bit different. After playing around with the photo here, as you can see, changing around some of my adjustments and my colors and getting the right crop and stuff, we come to here. I added a graduated filter affecting all of that area. And then I came to this little box and I picked a color that I thought would work well with the rest of the image. So as you can see, I was sort of playing around with different colors and I was going from an aqua and then I sort of chose this purple, which you can see when you zoom right into the image here, it sort of picks up all the brake lights here and it changes them from a red magenta to sort of more of a purple, which contrasts really nicely with all the blue. So that's something I've been playing around with a bit more recently with some of my really dark night photos. Then I added another graduated filter from another corner and pretty much did the same. So basically, if you were to look at both the graduated filters here, there's one that has a color on this side affecting all the top of the image. And there's a graduated on the bottom that has a different color selected that's affecting the bottom of the image, which for me works really well and different to how you would work with the color grading here because when you work with the color grading, it picks the mid-tones of the image. So the whole image gets affected when you select around with your mid-tones and shadows and highlights. And I'm sure if you're really good with that stuff, you can pick and choose and select to do something similar. But what I wanted to do was get one half of the image to be one color and another half of the image to be another color. And basically you're just fading those colors together. And that's more or less how I got the purpley aqua bluey look to the shot. Then basically selected another image, Command Shift S, synchronized the settings onto this photo, you see before, after with new settings. And one more thing that I do, especially when there's a photo like this with a lot of negative space in the sky, as you can see up here, I like to add two graduated filters. One you can see here that the exposure is dropped quite dramatically, maybe even by a stop. And another one down here that is also dropped a little less dramatically to sort of bring in that fade like I was talking about earlier with mushing sort of two colors together so they sort of meet in the middle. This is pretty much doing the same but just for the top of the sky. So if I get rid of my graduated filters here and turn them off, you can see that there's not as much focus pulled down to the buildings there, which is where I want my viewer's eye to go, is that I want people to be focusing on that Turkish flag on that tall building there in the middle of the city. So by adding the graduated filters, darkening them, plus synchronizing the settings from my last image. So <laughs> I know it's a lot, but stay with me. So basically I'm dragging graduated filters over different parts of the image to draw your eye where I want you to see. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense because that was a lot of information. This is the landscape version of the shot, but I purposely didn't export this photo so I can show you how I get those nice Instagram slides across my feed. So first of all, I'm gonna hit R, I'm gonna come into my crop, and I'm gonna click 16 by 10. I'm gonna select my crop. Uh, yep, happy with that. I'm gonna right click, edit in Adobe Photoshop, and then I'm gonna hit C or come to your crop selection tool here, click on it and come to slice tool and basically drag a square so it clicks, as you can see the purple line here, it clicks on the halfway point, then release, all right? Now your image is split into two halves. And because we cropped before to 16 by 10, each one of these halves is four by five, which is what each panel is on Instagram is a four by five cut. We're just gonna come to file, export, save for web. Now, because I shoot on the Sony, it's a really big file size and I don't need that many pixels, especially when I'm posting to Instagram. So I'm gonna come down and just resize to 4,000 pixels and I'm just gonna click save. Go to the folder where you saved it, select the images, right click, share, airdrop, and there you go. So you've got two photos there, one, two. So make sure you've selected both your photos, hit next, and you should be able to get a nice pan. There you go. Your audience will love you. As I mentioned before, I was editing photos using my presets from my V2 pack. If you wanna get those presets, I'll leave a link in my description to where you can go download them. They come in a pack of 25, Plus they have 25 walkthrough tutorials and other tutorials showing you how to use Lightroom. So a little mini Lightroom course in there. Plus it comes with 25 of my raw files for you to play around with if you wanna practice your editing or something like that. All linked down in the description there. Plus in the description is all the gear I used in this photo shoot. That was a massive vlog. That was really, that was a massive fucking vlog. And to be honest, this video, uh, some people ask me sometimes how, how much, how many hours or how long it takes to make one of my videos. I can tell you this video, including filming and editing, this would be at least 30 to 40 hours uh, in one video. So yeah, if you've watched this far, thank you. 
Uh, <laughs> I try to put a lot of effort into each video and I try to upload once a week. It's been real hard and overwhelming uh, just being here. There's so much to do. There's so much to see. There's so much to shoot. I'm actually at a point where I have so many photos to edit that I don't even know what to do with myself, which is awesome. Complete contrast to last year being in lockdown, not knowing what to do with myself. And now I have so much work and so many videos to edit and so many photos to edit, but there's so much stuff going on and I'm trying to find the time to do all my things, plus keep shooting new content. Like there's just so much going on that it's overwhelming. So yeah, there's lots to do. I'm actually, as I'm finishing off this, I'm about to pack my bag because I'm heading off to Italy for today. Uh, and I'm hoping to get this video out today. So as soon as you see this, I'll be at the airport going to Italy. And then after Italy, straight after, like I fly from Italy, hopefully to Stockholm, Sweden. And then from Stockholm, I come back to Amsterdam for one night and then go straight to Germany. And I think I'll be doing a road trip around Germany with BMW. So that's that. And then after that, I think I have plans to come to the UK, but nothing is uh, set in stone yet. But that's pretty much my skeleton plan for the next month. So yeah, there's a lot going on. Whew. That is the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If I did teach you something new in today's video, maybe you can leave a like down below or help me out by hitting subscribe. But with that all said and done, have a shit one and I'll see you in the next one. Let's go get the boys and let's go find the new fucking rooftop because that's bullshit. I want me rooftop. <laughs> Why did I do that? Ah, I fucking missed. I missed the button. Come here. That's what I fucking thought.